In IHME's recent paper on fatal police violence by race, ethnicity, and state in the United States, we found that there was more than 30,000 deaths from police violence between 1980 and 2018. Of these deaths, 55% went unreported by the National Vital Statistics System, which is the vital registration system for the U.S. and the primary data collection agency for deaths in the U.S. The causes of underreporting um, vary. Several are that medical examiners and coroners are often embedded within police departments, leading to conflicts of interest as they're expected to report on the violence of the departments they may be embedded within. Additionally, there's a lack of training and standardization for doctors and medical examiners on how to fill in death certificates. This leads to misclassification of police violence as homicide or suicide most commonly. Despite this underreporting, there are several open source databases that we found to be more accurate and complete than NVSS and should be utilized to drive policy change. These include mapping police violence, fatal encounters, or the counted. Really, undercounting is just obscuring the true issue, which is police violence, which like all violence is a public health concern as in, and is preventable. In IHME's recent paper on fatal police violence by race, ethnicity, and state in the United States, we found that black Americans were three and a half times more likely to be killed by the police than white Americans. Indigenous and Hispanic Americans were twice, almost twice as likely to be killed by the police than white Americans. Police violence against black people was higher every year 1980 to 2018 than it was for white people in the United States. Since 1980, this racial disparity has remained largely unchanged. All of these statistics really outline the systemic racism that is driving police violence in the U.S. And police violence is a public health issue, violence is a public health issue, and systemic racism is a public health issue. Police violence is one of the causes that we are responsible for the estimation and uh, publish this estimation every year, same as cirrhosis, same as lung cancer, same as homicide. Then we, we published for many years from GBT 2010 number of deaths due to the police violence. In the process of the calculation, we come up to the, this uh, understanding that our estimation for the police violence is not correct and is not compatible with the other sources. Then we try to find and we come up to the, this result that, oh, there is a big misclassification in, in NVSS data, that is National Vital Registration System in uh, U.S. And, all, and also in the other country, and we find that that not only this is misclassified and underreporting this cause, also it is it has unequal distribution in the different age, sex, and race. This is our job to produce number of deaths and burden of disease and injury for the different causes every year. And we come up to the, this item that we have some inconsistency between everything that we have in the data and everything that happened in the reality and we published. Police violence is, is high in the in US. If we compare, this is outside of this paper, but uh, if we compare that, what is the level of police violence in US in the high income country is five times higher than any other high income country. We are uh, in the process to finalize a paper that we want to publish is about global violence. What is the global violence? We, we prepared the paper for the 40 years violence that includes suicide, homicide, and uh, conflict 
terrorism and police violence for the all the country from 1980 until 2019. Police use of force or police killings is a key social problem in the United States today. It always has been since the inception of the criminal legal system, but has brought a lot of attention recently uh, with the killing of Mike Brown in 2014 um, and the very, very public and traumatic killing of Mr. George Floyd in 2020. A lot of national attention has turned to this issue of uh, police use of force. A big problem, though, is that we don't have accurate statistics uh, to really measure the extent of this problem. Um, this paper really highlights the underreporting. 55% of um, the police killings in this country have been underreported. The analysis finds that African Americans in this country are killed at a rate of 3.5 times higher than white people by police. Uh, so this, the data really highlight we have a serious problem and the authors frame it in a public health approach. So many different groups from policymakers to advocates to commissions um, have been calling for um, an approach to really decrease the use of force, but many folks have been hiding behind the lack of numbers and the lack of numbers highlighting the racial disparities in this country. This report now calls us to the carpet and asks us what are we going to do to address this violence. Data analysis really help us see the landscape of police killings and the disparities across uh, racial and ethnic groups in this country. And so it really asks the question, uh, puts it on the table to say policymakers and law enforcement agencies, what are we going to do to address this problem? We can no longer hide behind the fact that we don't have the numbers. We have accurate, um, heartbreaking numbers. It was hard to read this report. My stomach turned to look at the disparities and the numbers of people killed by the police in this country. So now uh, we're really calling the question and saying, policymakers, how can we address this issue? I think that communities of color or the first reaction may be disgust and um, hurt seeing the numbers and the disparities by which African Americans, Native Americans, and Latinx population are disproportionately killed by the police in this country. But I think communities will also use these data to argue for more attention, more resources, more restructuring, uh, dismantling of the violence used in police forces and the build up of community support systems that don't sort of make sure that there's a, a person attending a, an event with a gun on their hip, recognizing that that might lead to more violence. My hope is that this report will move us closer to a place of transparency where there no longer has to be a systematic review or a report of this nature that comes out having spent hundreds of hours of research and time, but actually it's transparent to all the people of this country. And we can see it firsthand and that transparency inevitably leads to better and more robust accountability. We deserve a transparency in the way the coding works and even the way we, we code and report fatal police violence interactions. What I would argue, and we see the data very clearly, is there is an arc that is increasing from the moment in time that 1033, which is a federal program that has allowed federal military grade weapons to fall in the hands and be purchased by local law enforcement officers and law enforcement um, departments. When you have law enforcement carrying AR-15s, bomb resistant gear, and have tanks that were meant to withstand missiles, that doesn't make sense when you're talking about creating community safety. It is now scientifically documented that you have black folks who are dying at rates per 100,000 folks that are higher than the likelihood of any person in this country dying 
in an accident while on their bicycle or a higher rate of dying than someone contracting measles and dying of that. The fact that we've spent money, investment, and time to make sure that those bicycling, measles, those mortalities decrease substantially, I then ask the question, how are we not interrogating the deaths that have been declared a public health crisis and focusing on and saying, we can't allow this. 